Hi, I'm Delaney Trezice and I'm here visiting the city of Milwaukee. The Brew City is often thought of as being all brats, beer, and fish fries, but that's only for the people that aren't in the know. In reality, Milwaukee is a diverse cross-section of culinary delights, which is well represented by the variety of cuisines that you can get from its food trucks. Come along with me as we sample some offerings from two outrageous women that had a cheesy idea, chow down on some of the best barbecue in the great north, and I'll take you into the kitchen to show you one of my favorite lunch recipes, just in case there isn't a food truck nearby. Next on Truck That's Good. When people think of Wisconsin, they think of cheese. The Gouda girls, Catherine and Tina, are living up to the stereotype with a gourmet twist. Let's see how they serve up curbside comfort to a hungry lunch crowd. So explain to me how a trucker from Fond du Lac and an Alaskan, uh, <laughs> how you found yourselves coming together to run a food truck. I know, it's just crazy, <laughs> isn't it? Who would believe? And actually, we were at that point in life where I thought, well, we're going into retirement soon, and I had a health crisis. And the doctor said, it's time. You need to calm down a little bit. Do something you more enjoy. What would you like to do? And the world was just starting the food truck craze. And of course, cheese. What more, what's well, better than course. cheese? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. So we just dove in, I, and it has been just a joy from the day one. Yeah, let's go ahead, let's go taste uh, what you guys have to offer. That sounds Fantastic. great. Sounds Come good. and eat with us. All right, so what are we making today? This is, this is our, our sandwich we call the triple. Ooh. It has um, Gouda, Kojak, and Havati. This particular sandwich actually has double duties. It's our triple, but also it turns into our mac. So after she's grilled, we take her and we open her up and then we put a scoop of Catherine's homemade mac and cheese inside. And it's just, just sinful. I have so I understand something wonderful with mac and cheese is about to happen here. Oh yeah. Now we're gonna take that sweet little triple that we started with. So excited. And we're gonna open that bad boy up. Holy cow. That is lovely. <laughs> and then if we go, this is just absolutely flipping insane. Oh my goodness. It's a scoop of the homemade mac and cheese. <laughs> and in the mac and cheese is all the ends from the cheese. We slice all our oh. own cheese back at the kitchen. Yeah. So there's provolone, there's mozzarella, there's gouda, there's kojak, there's munster, there's havati. Holy cow. Every cheese we use in the truck <laughs> is in that mac and cheese. That's so, incredible. and then this is the part where it gets absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> How do you come up with some of these combinations? So I know the, the know, mac and cheese, that one is kind of like, a, that one's kind of a hodgepodge. Honestly, they, they, it's so funny, but they kind of just come to me. Yeah. I've never, I've never sat down, and to be in all honest with you, I've never, except for my classic, I've never tried any of my sandwiches. Really? To me, as long as the flavor profile sounds like it's going to be fantastic, I simply put it together. All right, I'm going to go in for it. Here we go. <laughs> oh gosh. And oh geez. Catherine's mac and this? cheese is by far some of the best mac and cheese. She, um, two years ago we participated in the uh, Chicago mac and cheese takedown it was called. Really? And um, we come down there, of course, the only two Wisconsin contestants and she ended up walking away with um, People's Choice and Judge's <laughs> Choice Holy cow. for Best Mac and Cheese in I, Chicago. I can see why. This yeah. is, I have lived in Wisconsin all of my life and this is quite possibly the best, like most cheesy combination that I have ever had and I love it. This is incredible. I mean, it's, it's so many different combinations of cheese, but it's, they all blend together so well. It's like, it, especially with that mac and cheese, it's just so creamy and it's very like, the noodles are cooked perfectly. The butter, it's, it's just buttery and gooey yeah. and delicious. With a short trip down Highway 43 South, Milwaukeeans will find themselves in East Troy. At the corner of Highway 20 and National Avenue, this unassuming filling station is serving up more than just fuel. Leon Davis of LD's Barbecue has been providing world-class barbecue to devoted patrons for years. Let's go see why LD's is a destination that's worth the road trip. So let's talk a little bit about how you got your start. Why, why barbecue? My wife and I used to be traveling nurses and we traveled mainly the southern United States, all the way from South Carolina to Arizona to Mississippi, um, even spent some time in Denver. And if you want to talk about beef, you got to talk about Denver. 
Uh, but be, even before that, I, I started cooking because my mom had about five things and most of those came out of a can. Um, <laughs> and so I wanted to be able to do something different. And so I started cooking outside because I didn't have to clean up as much. <laughs> Barbecue is communal. It's, it's about friends and family. And the people that come here become our friends and family. We've got a whole lot of something over here. What are we working with? This is the brisket that we're going to load in the smoker here in just a little while. Brisket has turned out to be the most popular thing I have to serve. No kidding. Um, I think it outsells everything at least two to one. Holy and, cow. and right now in this time of the year, which we haven't hit our busy season yet, I'm smoking about, um, about 100 to 125 briskets a week. I only use a packer cut on my brisket because it's got the fat that you need to keep the meat juicy. It's the entire flat and the point. Uh, so what do we have going on here? So what I got is uh, one of the briskets that we took off about an, an hour ago. Um, I have taken them off and let them rest uh, because if you don't, then you start to lose a lot of juice. Right. That's why you should never take the temperature until you're pretty sure that it's about 90% done. But sure. um, anytime you pierce the skin or start screwing around with it, it's going to uh, start losing a bunch of juice. So we let it rest at least an hour sure. before we start cutting and trimming. What happens next? So I'm just gonna start trimming the brisket and slicing it for serving. Beautiful. So I, I wanna scrape off as much fat as I can because oh. now that it's so, it's been in the smoker so long, it's really tender. The fat is really easy to trim away. Comes right off. And so you can yeah. definitely identify the difference now between the flat and the point. Yeah. And you see the different grains of yeah, meat Yeah, it's here. running that way. That's beautiful. And we reserve that fat for use later. What would you trim. use that fat in? Well, I'm going to put that in the big pot behind you. Okay. And then we're going to uh, add water, let it cook down and thicken, remove all the fat, and then that's the juice we pour back over the brisket oh. after we've sliced it so that it keeps it really moist and tender. Yeah. Oh, that's got to be delicious. So see, that's all going to be yeah. really beautiful and tender. You can see how open that grain is. So it'll accept those juices that we put back on it and make it even more tender. You making meatloaf today? Absolutely. What, uh, what goes in this meatloaf then? Oh, this meatloaf is a mixture of veal, pork, and beef. And it is also, I, I add my breadcrumbs from the bread that we bake here in, in the, uh, at LD's. And anything that's left over at the end of the day, then I just cut it in half. And I can toast it in the oven, run it through the dicer, and save those breadcrumbs for the meatloaf. It also has molasses and onions um, and eggs, okay. um, and as well as the, the rub that I use for my meats and, and barbecue sauce. So let's talk, what goes into your rub then? My rub is, is not a dissimilar uh, mixture than anybody else. It's just the quantities that make it different. Um, it is gluten-free. It's It's got paprika, it's got garlic, it's got onion powder, um, no salt whatsoever. And, and then I use a Cajun uh, seasoning in there as well. a pulled pork sandwich and some potato salad. Beautiful. And everything here, everything here is house made then, correct? Yep, yep, yep. I am so excited. Barbecue sauce, the buns, all that stuff. Beautiful. Alright, let's give this a shot. Hmm. Oh my god. That smokiness is perfect. And that juice. It's a really tender, like uh, you can just tell it's it's so juicy and moist. It's you did a really nice job with this. Thank you. 
I love how the smoke is it's really subtle but like it comes up right after the fact and it's it's a really it's it, it, all of the flavors just meld together really really nicely what if someone can't come out to East Troy can is there any way that they can get your food any other way well I do catering all right and um, I do bring my rig to places to do that um, for weddings um, there's there's a couple of different ways you can do it um, occasionally I can have part of the day to deliver to businesses um, otherwise um, I can come to your business and cater for uh, the largest party I've done so far has been 450 and that was uh, <laughs> highway construction workers uh, otherwise I do have a lot of catering and it's booked all the way until the middle of November for every almost every Saturday for weddings graduations um, and office parties business related parties all that kind of stuff you're a busy man <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of smoke being made here. <laughs> I'd like to thank LD's Barbecue and the Gouda Girls for inviting us out to their kitchens. I've brought you into my kitchen where I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite lunch specialties, Thai chicken tacos. The things you will need are one pound of boneless, skinless chicken breast, a half a cup of peanut oil, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of rice vinegar, a half a teaspoon of red curry paste, two tablespoons of brown sugar, a fourth of a cup of cilantro and loosely packed, one clove of garlic, a one inch piece of ginger, one teaspoon of sriracha sauce, one cup of carrots and shredded, you can use matchstick carrots, one cup of red cabbage, a three fourths cup of sour cream. We're gonna use two limes. You can use some flour tortillas, about one or two avocados, and some chopped cilantro just for garnish. Right, so the first thing we're gonna do for this is we're going to make our marinade. We're gonna start with a large bowl. And to that, we're gonna add, let's see, there we go. We're gonna add two tablespoons of peanut oil. There we are. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. And if you wanted to make this gluten-free, you can use tamari sauce, and that'll help make that, make that gluten-free. There we are, right in the bowl. Lovely. We're gonna use one tablespoon of rice vinegar. Okay. I'm gonna take going to take one fourth of a teaspoon of red curry paste that's going to bring out some really nice flavor in there all right we're going to take two tablespoons of brown sugar add that right to the bowl okay. now we're going to get some fresh ingredients in there we're going to get some chopped garlic about a clove should do Garlic is really characteristic of Thai cuisine, and I think it's really, it's really important to use fresh garlic. Make sure that you're using that and not powdered, because that fresh garlic really makes the whole difference. It makes all the difference in the world. There we are. We're just going to mince that really quick. There we go. I'm going to take that and put it right in the bowl. I'm going to take some fresh cilantro. I'm going to chop that up. And again, this freshness is really going to help aid to that, those great flavors of Thai cuisine. Chop that up a little finer. Some of the fresh flavors that are coming out of here, it's really just a beautiful smell. Chop that up nice and fine. Doesn't have to be too perfect, but we want to make sure that it really can get incorporated into that chicken, release some of those flavors. All right. Take that and add that straight to the bowl. All right. We're going to take some of our ginger. Just peel this really quick. Again, fresh ginger is really characteristic of Thai cuisine. So it's really important that you don't use the powdered stuff. Make sure that you use it fresh. Because you really, you can't beat the real stuff. All right. 
That looks pretty good. I'll take this. Go ahead and grab your zester. I do hope you make this at home because some of the smells that are coming out of this are fantastic. There's not nothing beats the smell of fresh ginger. But there we are. Take some of that off. And then we'll plop that right in the bowl. There we go. Alright, now we're gonna whisk it up. Alright. Alright. I'm gonna make sure that this is nice and stirred. Wanna incorporate all of those great flavors together. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so our marinade is done. We can go ahead and add our chicken. And this chicken has been diced up into about bite-sized pieces, about an inch strips. We're just gonna add that straight to the marinade. All right. We're gonna take this and knead it up. Try and really make sure that you incorporate all of that marinade into the chicken that's going to be some really great flavor. All right, we've got this all incorporated. So we're going to go ahead and cover this with some plastic wrap. And we're just going to put it in the fridge. And this is going to marinate for about 30 minutes. We really want those flavors to incorporate into that chicken. You'll be happy that you waited. It's really incredible. All right. Try and make sure that you can get as much air out of there as possible. All right. And it's to the fridge, and we're going to let this sit for 30 minutes. So the chicken has been marinating for about 30 minutes now, so it should be good to go. In this frying pan, I have two tablespoons of peanut oil. Coconut oil would also work very nicely in this recipe. So we're just going to take this chicken and add it straight to the frying pan. Get that right in there. Beautiful. So while this chicken is cooking, we're going to go ahead and get started on that slaw. This is a really simple slaw. It only takes a quarter of a cup of peanut oil. It goes right in the bowl. Lovely. And then one of my favorite flavors, I'm sure many people's, we're gonna use a teaspoon of sriracha sauce. It goes right in the bowl. And that's it. Really simple. We're just gonna take this and whisk it up really quick. Just a nice, a little extra flavoring for those vegetables. And honestly, that should do. Nice and simple. All right. From there, we can prep our vegetables. And it's really nice if you just have matchstick carrots. That's a really nice way to just save on a little prep time. But the cabbage is going to take a little extra time. Not too much, though. So first, we're going to quarter this. So first in half and then I'm going to do it once more. There we are. We don't want any toughness in here so we are going to get rid of that core. Just right in there and kind of be careful when you're doing this. Don't, uh, don't cut off any fingers. All right and then from there we're just going to thinly slice our cabbage and we can just do just like that. Lovely. And just about a cup of this should be fine. If you like a little more veggies on your tacos, you're welcome to add a little more. I think that should be about good. And I like to cut this in half just so you don't have giant pieces. Makes it a little easier to eat. Break this up a little bit. Then we're going to take that and add it straight to the bowl. Yeah, and if you have any large chunks, you can take those out. I really love the color of the red cabbage. It just adds, it's a really unique and bright, bright purple that really lightens up that dish. Or it adds a lot of neat colors. And next we're going to add our carrots. Nice and handy. About a cup of this should do as well. Again, depending on how much, or how much veggie you like in your in your tacos. You can use as much or as little as you want, but I say about a cup. We're going to mix that together. This is pretty much done, so we're going to take this and put it in the fridge until we are ready, and until then, we're going to get started on our lime sour cream. All right. 
Before we get too far on this, I am going to do a little bit of cleanup. It is really important to make sure that your station is always clean. It's the first thing that you learn in the kitchen. All right. Grab some paper towel here and just kind of wipe this off. There we are. Always good to keep it clean. All right. You're going to love this. This is super simple and it's a really nice way to brighten up this dish even more. Um, I, in this bowl, I have about three-fourths of a cup of sour cream. You can use as much as you want, but three-fourths seems to be, to be good for me. We're going to take two limes, and first of all, you're going to zest it. It's really important that you zest it first. Because it is, it is not fun trying to zest that when it is a half, and it's already squeezed. You want to get all of that bright, that brightness of the zest. Really beautiful smell. I'm going to go check my chicken. It smells like it's just about done. Okay. This probably won't take too much longer. We're just about there. So I'm going to finish up with my sour cream here. We've rolled this out. So we're going to take that, cut it in half. All right. We're going to squeeze some of that lovely, some of that lovely lime juice in there. There we go. This one's being a little tricky. There we are. Some of that in there. One more. There we are. Look at that. This is really just a lovely, fragrant, very nice topping. We're just going to give this a quick stir. Really beautiful smells. All right, so this is looking really nice. So this is going to go in the fridge until we're ready for assembly. And by the smell of it, our chicken is just about done. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is really looking great, so I think we can take it off the stove, get it onto a plate, and we can get ready to start plating our tacos. All right, we're just gonna get this onto a clean plate. That marinade really smells incredible. All of those flavors melded together really, really nicely. All right, lovely. This is looking really great. So I think it's about time that we assembled our tacos. All right, so we've got our kitchen cleaned up and we've gotten everything ready for assembly, so it's time to plate. First, we're gonna start by cubing up our avocado. So first things first, you're gonna take your knife and stick it about halfway in between. Then you're gonna rotate that avocado all the way around. And there we are. You're gonna twist your avocado and pop that right open comes off nice and clean, and then you can just take this. Be very careful, but you just throw your knife into that nut, and then you can twist, and then it comes out nice and clean. All right, be careful when you're taking it off. There we are, just set that aside. Now we can go in and take our paring knife, and we're just gonna dice that up just a little bit. I love all of the colors that go into this dish. It's really just a bunch of beautiful bright greens and purples and oranges. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we can take this avocado. It's been nicely diced. Just take a spoon and scoop it on in there. There we are. And kind of scoop those chunks right into your bowl. It's time for the fun part. Let's assemble these tacos. All right, so here we have two lovely flour tortilla shells. If you would like to make this gluten-free, you can also go ahead and use corn tortillas if that's what you if that's what you would like to do. So we're actually going to start to do my chicken. We're going to start with this vegetable slaw. This lovely red cabbage and that bright orange carrot. Really nicely dressed with that sriracha sauce and that peanut oil. Give it just a nice little There we go. A nice little kick. Really beautiful. All right. Then from there, we're going to take some of this chicken. All of those great flavors, that fresh ginger. There we are. We're going to put that right on top. Really nice. You can really smell that garlic. All right. Very simple. Next, we're going to take some of that avocado that we just cubed up. We're just going to spoon that right on top. Right there. You can break up some of those chunks if you need to. There we are. 
see what I mean by those colors? It's really, it's really just gorgeous. It's a really beautiful dish. And then finally, we're gonna top it off with some of that lime sour cream. Give it a quick stir if you need to. Just try and make it look a little nicer. And just spoon that right on top. That's really gorgeous. All right. And this is a great way to get a great combination of two different cuisines and put that into one. And finally, we're gonna top it off with some of that cilantro that we cut earlier. Saved a little bit. Oh, just a little bit of a topping there. All right, let's go in for the bite. All right, here we go. Mm. That's a really beautiful combination of flavors. You can taste all of those really fresh vegetables and all of that fresh ginger, some of that lime juice. It all comes together really, really nicely. Yeah, that's a great recipe. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Truck That's Good. My name is Delaney Trezice, and I hope you have a great afternoon.